I've grown quite fond of using a set of Corsa as a way to test and experiment with how different cars from history drive. It's awesome to go read some history about a car or a race and then boot it up in sim just to see a little bit what that was like. I think the testing and just general driving and experiencing cars is something that's become quite popular for folks within a set of Corsa. And although the sim originally was made to be a racing simulator, the driving aspect almost seems more popular these days. Often when you find a new car, the question quickly becomes, where can I drive this thing? And if you're looking at a race from history, you can often find that circuit and boot it up and drive. But if you're just looking to generally take the car out and see what it's like, the long time answer had been the Nordschleife. Now I love the Nürburgring just as much as everybody, but after a while you've seen the whole track, you've done enough laps there, and it's fun enough, but you're ready for something different. I think I'm not alone in this, and for Assetto Corsa, a bunch of tracks, or the really maps, have popped up. They're free drive, free roam type experiences where it's a bunch of roads, sometimes very, very long, that you can just go and drive and experience the car, almost as if somebody handed you the keys in real life and you're going on a test drive. And these things are a ton of fun. It's fun to put yourself there and maybe not drive the car like you're on the limit. Drive it like you were actually trying to drive it around the roads and not take it off and ruin a very expensive automobile. I mentioned size, and size is one of the defining qualities of these big maps, these free roam uh, road surfaces for you to drive on. The more roads, the better, really, uh, if you're just trying to look for a drive. But Assetto Corsa has had a fundamental flaw in its physics design. It's a 32-bit application, and apparently some of the numbers uh, for calculating the physics on the cars just get a little too big when you're dealing with a lot of road surface. So uh, tracks like the Targa Florio or LA Canyons or even tracks like the Nürburgring will start to experience some weird physics glitches that if you stop the car, it'll start moving around or the force feedback will just feel kind of sloppy. And it does ruin the experience to some extent. So the reason all this is coming up today is because a new beta version of the content shader patch has been released. And I just talked a bit about the content shader patch with a rain effects video I did a few weeks ago, but this new version features a new way to calculate the physics uh, that makes it more precise and makes it possible to race around many of these circuits and maps without the major physics glitches that previously plagued them. The option is called the Double Precision Physics Engine, and it's a part of the 1.74 Preview 33 build. This is only available uh, on the Patreon for Content Shader Patch, but honestly, you could just subscribe once uh, if you wanted to, for five bucks, I think, and download the patch. It's really worth it, and based off of the stuff that they're able to do uh, with the patch, I think it's worth supporting even more. Who knows, maybe at some point he'll get to developing the AI a bit better. So with this major enhancement, I wanted to take it somewhere where we could experience something now that maybe was previously not possible. And this has been on the back burner for a while. These beautiful shots you're seeing are of a free roam type circuit called the Wicklow Mountains. There's a real area in Ireland uh, just south of Dublin. I believe the roads themselves form the route of a marathon, but it's absolutely not a racetrack. They're regular roads, uh, real roads from the world expertly modeled uh, with some real scan data and everything in Assetto Corsa. The track itself was made by Jake Grafton over at Race Department, and it covers a massive 38.1 kilometers of roads. That's almost 24 miles uh, around this beautiful area in Ireland. It's called the Lap of the Gap. I think that's what the marathon is called to it. Curves up and down mountains and over the top of a huge mountain range with a lake in the middle. It's extremely beautiful and very fun to experience with a good car. And to experience this amazing slice of the Irish countryside, I thought there'd be nothing better than a Mini Cooper. And this is an Austin Mini Cooper from Pessio, who I've talked about before as well. Pessio makes amazing cars, and this one's no exception. It's an original 1964 Mini Cooper from the first run. It's got a 76 horsepower, I believe, I-4 in it. Not a lot of horsepower, but it's a tiny car. It's a box on wheels, so uh, plenty of power, and it's the perfect car for this type of course. And I want to thank Glenn from my Discord for letting me know about this combo. I'm stealing it a little bit from his screenshots, but it was something I had to try for myself. All right, so we'll pull away from the Glendo Green grocery store and cafe here and get on the road since this is a very long lap. 
and we'll go past the start. Now this circuit, I guess I'd call it, or the marathon route itself, is broken up into four sections. And uh, Jake over at Race Department, who made this, uh, did this so that you can actually run a rally here. It's it's really kind of a rally course, but uh, it's definitely not a racetrack. You can see how wide or narrow <laughs> the circuit is here. Uh, the roads are here, and uh, this is about as wide as it gets at any part of the whole experience uh, around here. So not a place that you'd really be able to race, although I bet you could do some classic racing or racing these minis. You might be able to squeeze side by side uh, in a few spots, but really designed to be a driving track like we're doing here or a time trial type uh, mountain course. Uh, and broken into four sections, you could have, I've seen this a little bit in a set of course, a, a live rally type event where you get a bunch of folks on a server and test yourselves, almost like you would a real rally stopping in between and, and going one at a time. Just like some of the other big courses too, this one really brings you on a journey. We're starting out here uh, quite low down under the mountains, but we'll head up and head towards, I believe a waterfall, uh, and that will loop back around across the gap. We'll see the big lake and everything in the middle, uh, but it's, it's a very long lap, but it's a great experience just to drive, especially in a car like this. here. One of the things I think a lot of folks are searching for with these types of tracks is that you don't know the next corner. I think one of the reasons the Nürburgring uh, becomes less exciting, once you learn it, it's great to put in some laps there, but once you know all the corners, uh, it's nothing really to experience new. If you're driving a car, you can kind of quickly figure out what it can and can't do. So racing around roads or driving on roads like this can give you that thrill where maybe you go a little too fast in a section, or maybe you slow down a little more than you need to in another section. And of course, if you're not careful, you'll drive it off the road. There's always that, that hint of it there. I've done two full laps around this circuit so far, around the, uh, the map. I don't even know what to call it, but I've done two full laps, and so I barely know it. I know there's a couple of spots that can get me, at least from prior experience, and hopefully on this lap, so I should back up to fourth gear there. Hopefully on this lap, none of that will happen. So this car is very well regarded. All the reviews of it are very, very kind. The only thing folks don't seem to like, I have to agree with them a little bit, but it, it's the sound effects. Uh, it doesn't sound bad necessarily. It, it just doesn't really sound like a Mini, at least from what I've heard. But then again, I've never driven a Mini. I don't think I'll ever have the chance to, unfortunately. So I don't know if it's exactly accurate. It doesn't feel super out of place, but the whine seems a little weird. We'll come over a hump here. I know this one might have caught me out before. There's a nice stone wall there on the right. Get back up to fourth. You pretty much ride in third and fourth with this car, at least with the stock gearing. I haven't gone to try to play around with the setup or anything like that. Top of a berm here, and I think there's a pretty tightish corner coming up here on the right. up here and we'll get some great views going uh, but it's a cramped interior in the mini cooper there's obviously not a lot of space and it really makes you feel like that i tried at first to change the viewing position because it feels odd it feels like you're in the roof but if you look at the car from the outside the driver really does sit extremely high and i'm sure for anybody that's been in a mini cooper uh, your head's much much above the top of the the windshield so it's pretty accurate in that regard I find the rear view mirror actually kind of gets in the way of the view oh, car getting a little light there 
down to third gear. I find it's pretty easy to get out of trouble in this car if you go a little fast. And there we go, finishing the first section. So we'll start section two. I think there's a waterfall up here, maybe on the left. Certainly can see a river, but there's section two starting. So if you were doing some timed sections, and this one pretty much goes over the top. I'd say in this section, the scenery is the most barren, but it is kind of an empty area. Uh, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure there's a lot you could do here. I love the fact that there's very little human made objects. So you could really drive pretty much anything around here and have it feel correct period wise. There are some parked cars here and there uh, in the parking lots, which would throw it off, but the experience, it's really a raw driving experience, which I find myself wanting a lot. Just can't exactly see where the road goes, so you gotta take it tentatively on the accelerator. it somewhat realistically. I don't think I'd be this daring at all in real life, but I don't want to throw the car off in any way either. And we'll head down here to the top of this crest. Just grab the inside there. It helps turn the car a little bit. This Mini Cooper is from 1964. That's what it's modeled after. And that was part of the first run of the Minis. I believe they started manufacturing the Mini in 1959. Uh, and it wasn't until 1967 that they started making an updated version, the Mark II version. So this is about as original as it gets. The modeling in this thing is absolutely superb. The steering position is quite weird. It's almost like a bus position where the wheel almost comes up flat at a horizontal angle to, to the driver. Uh, but that's how it was. The car is so small and cramped it has to fit a certain way. Built for the tiny roads like this and for the inner city so you could easily find a place to park and not take up too much space. I, I wish they still, well I guess they do make some cars that are small, but the minis these days aren't them. They'll look more to Fiat for that, at least in America. All right, we'll put it down a third. It drives really nice though. The car in this configuration, it's, it's fully the street version. All of the paint schemes available are of the catalog colors that were available in 1964. Uh, but Pessio has also made a racing version, which I haven't tried yet, uh, but would be fun around a circuit. I think this one's perfect for a road track like this, where you're just driving on the road. Feel a little bit like I could imagine like a Jim Clark or a Jackie Stewart doing this on and off weekend in the 60s while they were racing F1. It's kind of fun to let your mind wander to that. Pass a little turnaround there. Plenty of places to pull off on the sides of the road, of course. Obviously places, I guess, to let a big truck by or something, although I don't imagine they would be driving on these roads. And we'll come through this 180, nice camber to the corners. You could go quite fast through here. Certainly want to take some quicker cars around here, but I, I kind of like not knowing the roads. Like I was saying, it's, it's fun to just drive and see what's in front of you and keep it on the track wherever you can. Obvious parallels to this in the Isle of Man, which I just did a video on. They're not very far apart in real life either in the the area, the scenery is very similar, but uh, this is, is quite a bit different to drive simply because it is very narrow. And the Isle of Man circuit is quite wide compared to this. They're both pretty quick. There aren't a lot of slow corners. Just went through that left-hander there, which is a little slower, but Isle of Man is definitely quicker than this track overall. And there doesn't exist a really good Isle of Man for a set of Corsi yet, so this can kind of fill that gap for folks 
that only do a set of core sound. So we should be working towards the end of this section number two. Whoa, a little fast there, Get the back end a little loose, but very recoverable. Now this version does come with two different sets of tires. There are track day tires and then pure stock road tires. I believe I have the default ones are on the car right now, which are the track day tires. Uh, so there's a bit more grip happening than just the pure road tires, uh, which would be fun. But I wanted to afford myself a little bit extra grip just in case <laughs> I did stuff like that. these curves here this is the real fun stuff some rocks dotted here and there just to keep you honest third gear there. See a van here on the left. All right, that ends section two. Up here we'll start section three. Now this is where shortly we'll come to, I guess what you'd call the midpoint of the, of the circuit, although I don't know if it's exactly halfway. Really get the speed up here. I can see plenty far ahead. I believe this is called the Sally Gap, this area. And I did take a quick look at Google Earth. I mean, from what you can see around, I believe a lot of the distant terrain is all uh, an actual picture of the area. And then the closer stuff obviously has been built uh, special and high fidelity, but it's very, very accurate looking. It does look quite barren in the, in the sim, but it is kind of that way in the game. Very tight here, almost ran wide. Once we get around a couple corners up here and start heading back down, we'll actually go into some of the more, I guess you'd call them populated areas. None of this is populated, we're in the country. But these are dream roads. This is the stuff if you could have millions of dollars and just go drive nice cars, this is where you would bring them. All right, and you can start to see the road on the other side there in the distance. All right, and we'll come up here. So this is, I think, the Sally Gap's big intersection. I actually want to stop here because I want to explain a little bit what I was talking about at the very start with the physics updates. So if I stop here, you'll notice the car just kind of sits and, and doesn't really shake or anything. Everybody that plays a set of Corsa will know that uh, the cars used to just slide all over the track at these big circuits. The physics were all messed up, especially when stopping, and it really did affect how the cars felt on the steering wheel. I'll start going again. <laughs> of course, I stopped on the right, because I'm used to that. We'll just nip the sign there a little bit, but we'll start section three here. The fact that you can stop like that now, this double calculation, that CSP has added in is amazing. For stuff like this, it really, it was hard to experience before because you would go slow and the wheel would feel really sloppy and uh, even driving around, it didn't feel great. But now it feels almost perfect. There's still a tiny bit of vibration here and there, but it's not anything to be concerned about anymore. It's very, very amazing. And it's stuff that I think the Assetto Corsa dev team directly said really wasn't possible, but CSP has shown us there are a lot of things, the content shader patch, <laughs> there are a lot of things possible that weren't necessarily coded in the sim to begin with. Now there apparently is a performance hit to using it. It's essentially, from what I can understand, calculating the physics twice uh, to provide more nuance to the numbers and we can speed up a little more here, headed downhill. 
so there is a performance issue. I think it would be more apparent. Oh, go real fast here. Windshield wipers shaking there on the hood. Such a cool detail. Oh, don't run wide. <laughs> Almost ran off the track there. So I think there would be a bigger hit to the performance with AI cars. It definitely isn't necessary to use at a smaller track. Uh, and so I think it'll be fine. I mean, I, I did mention the Nürburgring. You could maybe slightly experience that. Check this out. Oh, <laughs> so cool. You might be able to experience it at the Nürburgring a little bit, the issues, but it's really at the larger tracks. So something like this, obviously, but I know the LA Canyons is really popular and has that issue. The new uh, Tokyo Street Track Empty Box took a look at uh, with a lot of other folks. I know that has some issues with it that this would resolve. Uh, and of course, the Targa Florio. It's another reason I haven't really done a video there yet, <laughs> amongst others. Uh, but that would have this issue. So it's really for those situations where you're likely or possibly going to be driving alone like this just to drive a car and experience the track. So the physics or the uh, performance implication of it isn't too bad. All right, we'll come past all these trees. I think I just saw the lake off to the right there, so hopefully we can get a shot of it. I believe it's called Guinness Lake, which I don't know if that's where they get the beer from, but I might find my way down there later anyway. All right, slow down here. I remember this one as well. One of the rear guardrails you'll see. Down to second gear there. Curve back up the hill. Beautiful sunny day. I thought about doing this with fog or overcast as it would often be in this area, but wanted to show off the countryside. So it happens to be a beautiful sunny day here in Ireland. Look off to the right, you can see the lake there just over the wall. Beautiful, beautiful. Try not to run to the wall here. You can see those little white dots on the hills too. It's rocks, I believe, that are beside the track on the, on the hills. You can see them dotted like that on the Google Maps as well, so I know it's something that's can be seen from quite a distance. All right, we'll come over these hills here. I believe we're going to plunge down in a second. There's at least one more intersection we'll come to. You can see some roads snaking off now. We're on the main road, and this is what they what it's called the full loop. Pick up some speed here. It's the full loop around the full marathon course, if you will. But there are some side roads that you are able to go down, and I haven't quite explored any of those yet. <laughs> I don't know where there might be a wall or not. But I do know there's a couple really narrow roads coming up, and if you thought these were narrow, just wait. Quite terrifying to go that fast in a mini <laughs> in real life. Just see the speedometer down there. All right, finishing section three. So we'll come up here, I believe, to a sharp right-hander. Little orange sign warning us. Yeah, here we go. Some detour signs. We'll come to pretty tight right-hander. Crank the wheel get it around. Yeah, and this is where things get really narrow, but so cool, and it'll be fun to really go fast through here once I learn some of the areas of the circuit. Maybe go with a faster car, like I was saying. Objects whizzing by on both sides. That's what makes something feel really fast. I talk about it all the time. The old spa track. I think one of the reasons people like that are there are a lot of objects really close to the car that make it feel like you're going much faster, even if I mean, we're not even going 70 miles an hour yet. <laughs> not only, not even at uh, this tight of quarters. It is quite fast, but you know, it feels like you're going a thousand miles an hour. Ooh. Easy to run into a wall here. 
these definitely feel like rally roads. You could have a pretty fun tarmac rally around here. Definitely would appreciate the pace notes. Past a bunch of farms. I mean, you have to take a minute to appreciate the detail here too. This is all, you know, done by hand and uh, it's very impressive. I think some parts of the track, they look a little barren, but that's that's because it is there. And you have things like this, a little water on the side, trees placed everywhere, fencing. Stuff takes a lot of time to do. I know the track's still being uh, improved as well. So likely if you're watching this in the future, it looks even better than it does here. clue where I'm going. It's much harder to see here too because of how close all the objects are so to be quite patient and not throw it away right towards the end of the lap. We got a little deviation here off this main road. I think we're going to cut over on a side road there. A little dip. And Besides that wine, I actually quite like the sound of the car. I don't know. People seem to have a lot of issues with it. I'm not sure if that wine is realistic. Pick up a little speed here. I can finally see ahead of me just a little bit. Dip into the shadows here. Hard shadows at this, this weather setting. Make for pretty cool looking scenery. Down to third gear then. Hell, I believe coming up here is the sharp right-hander to head back to close to where we started. But very much a journey. I talk about it in some of the other videos along tracks. It really feels like you're going somewhere, which is often what I'm looking for in a circuit. So something like this is perfect. I actually almost feel that sensation of going downhill, even though we're just into sim. I think something like this obviously would be amazing and awesome. We'll actually go to the left here, interesting. Something like this would be amazing in VR and definitely want to get VR. I know VR videos, in my opinion, aren't the best, uh, but obviously to experience it yourself, it uh, would be pretty awesome in VR, this. Oh, bogging down a bit in fourth gear, really steeply headed uphill here. And even though I've gone around this circuit three times, I don't quite remember this part heading back up. So we're on a new adventure. Maybe I took a separate route. a different type of enjoyment out of this. I feel like with circuits like the Isle of Man or the Targa Florio that in the back of my mind I want to learn the corners and, and the different turns and everything but with this one I don't care as much about that. I know I'm never going to be racing competitively around here so it's more just for the enjoyment of driving overall and it makes it a bit better. It's definitely intimidating going to drive somewhere like the Targa Florio, the Isle of Man or even the Nürburgring for somebody that doesn't know it yet and feel like you've got to learn it. You got to be really quick around it. Pressure's kind of off with, with something like this. It's very, very, very nice. ahead. A lot of little 
hills and everything over here. Definitely a trickier section. The first half of the lap was quite a lot easier than the end of it. Uh, but the end is more impressive, I feel like, as far as the scenery and everything. So <laughs> I know a bunch of folks will watch the first you know, little bit and probably never see this part. And I'm fortunate for them because this is some of the coolest scenery and roads that I've seen in Assetto Corsa. walls on both sides will give you definitely a big uh, <laughs> big issues if you hit them Look very tight here not a lot of margin for error on a road like this but these really are just trails It'd be an impressive place to run a marathon I haven't really talked about that at all being a marathon route with the hills and everything that it has uh, it's obviously beautiful, but <laughs> this would be absolutely torture to run a full marathon on. Not for the faint of heart. I'd definitely rather take the horsepower around. Oh, road gets really dark here, tough to see. Ooh, dipping in on the dirt a little bit. And hopefully it all comes through on video okay. I know the darker greens and, and all of that could be tough. <laughs> tough for the video to keep up with, but a very, very much impressive, and I highly recommend checking this out for yourselves. Right, we got some speed limit signs. 50k, all right, here we come. It's another junction. Got a stop sign. Might as well follow the laws. All right, and there we go. Back to the finish and the grocery store where we started. Got our pit guy right in the middle of the road. Zip around him and head into the parking lot again. So, a pretty impressive, to say the least, track. All the modeling and everything. But so excited that this big physics issue in a set of course has been fixed. I hope uh, other folks know about this and, and you can go try out uh, the new version of the content shader patch. It's definitely worth it. I highly recommend picking it up and I'm sure it'll make its its way to wide availability at some point but I can only hope it encourages some larger tracks to be created and there's a few big tracks from the past that would be great to drive around so if you made it this far thanks for watching I uh, hope you enjoyed it thanks to Glenn again and my discord for letting me know about this and yeah I'll be back again soon so see you all again next time